Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. A little bonus episode for you guys here because the Vikings made a really interesting free agent signing yesterday. We'll do write that down predictions on a separate episode and an accountability session. But boys, hello on this Wednesday. And hello to our friends at Quick Trip, the official convenience store and gas station of Purple Daily. And the official home of your dinner tonight. You're saying, Sports Dad, what are we talking about? My dinner tonight, but look at all of those great choices. And I want to talk to you right now, sports kids, about one thing. And that is the chicken options at Quick Trip. Fried chicken, chicken tenders, roasted whole chicken. You know what? I'll put their chicken Mm. mano a mano against the competition. You talk about competition. You talk about press coverage. You talk (laughs) about trying to go against a receiver. Let's talk about chicken options. Let's talk about Quick Trip. Um, chicken tenders, hand breaded, jumbo oh, yeah. size, three or eight piece, boneless right. wings. Who doesn't love boneless wings? Fried chicken. Yeah, bone I, might, I might debate you a little on that, but not at Quick boneless Trip. Boneless wings, a- not a Quick Trip. And how can you not love? It's it's the convenience of the boneless wings. Yep. It's the fried chicken bone in. It's the roasted whole chicken. You know what? Forget about you. You might not like one thing, but that's why Quick Trip has so many options for your dinner tonight. Quick Trip. It's not just about convenience. It's about convenience and quality. At least that's my catchphrase for Quick Trip, so I hope they like it. <laughs> just making up catchphrases. That's actually for pretty good. Convenience here. and quality is pretty good. <laughs> it is pretty good. <laughs> Hopefully that's lie. approved by the Quick Trip legal department. We'll they might, you a, know what? They might want to hire me full time. <laughs> Can come up with a jingle for them? <laughs> no, I don't know if they need a jingle. Okay, Shaq Griffin brought on board, maybe as a starting cornerback. So it's a one-year, $6 million contract. He's 28 years old. He's a former third-round pick by Seattle. He was with Seattle for the first four years of his career, Jacksonville for a couple years. And then Houston last year signed him to a one-year deal, waived him in November after he had been moved out of the starting role, special teams for a couple weeks. They waived him. Carolina picked him up. Primarily an outside cornerback. PFF grades him as just a solid kind of average-ish, maybe slightly below average depending on the metric or the year cornerback. So, I mean, is this a situation where Shaq Griffin is one of your starting outside cornerbacks? Makai Blackman is the other. Byron Murphy is your slot with Andrew Booth Jr. and Caleb Evans as depth. What do you make of this? I make of it exactly that. So I think he's going to... If this shakes out like we probably expect and the Vikings expect, I think Shaq Griffin battles a Caleb Evans for an outside job. Murphy plays inside, or Blackman does. See, that that's the thing, too. Blackman can play inside as well. So I don't know exactly how th- that's going to shake out for sure. My expectation is what you said is probably right, which is starting training camp, Makai Blackman's outside, uh, Byron Murphy Jr., who started outside last year and then went inside in the nickel, but of course you're in that package a lot, um, might move full-time inside. Shaq Griffin, though, it's an interesting case because of this. So he he is uh, going to be 29 in July. He's certainly not young. Uh, He was fantastic in Seattle. And in fact, in his contract year, which was 2020 with the Seahawks, he played so well that Jacksonville signed him to a three-year, $44.5 million contract with $29 million guaranteed in 2021. So wow, he dude. was a big-time player. And as I recall, I want to say the Vikings might have did. sniffed around him then. But here's, here's, mm-hmm. but here's what I found that's more intriguing, and it speaks to this being a legitimate signing with a good chance to win a job. Uh, last year, before he signed with the Texans, Brian Flores and the Vikings pursued him. So Mm. this is their second bite. So it's more important that it was the Flores defensive regime that pursued him. This is the second bite at the Shaq Griffin apple. They got him this time. I'm not saying he's going uh, to be great. And there's definitely been a decline there. But all of that being said, for a guy who comes pretty cheaply, um, this makes a lot of sense. Because I think as things stood going into yesterday, there was definitely some concern about depth. And, like, can Booth even play? Like, we don't know. 
And yeah. at this point in time, he hasn't played much. And when he has played, he's inevitably been benched again. So I like this move as a depth move. And I like this move because the one thing I think we have learned, and this should be true across the board, but it's probably not. Brian Flores has a type. Defensively, he has a type. So if a year ago he said, go see if we can get Shaq uh, Griffin, and at that time he decided to sign with the Texans, I like the fact that he's gone back. So it's not like this willy-nilly, random, let's just sign a guy. I think there's definitely a purpose here and an opportunity here. What's interesting is is how like quickly the mighty can fall as, as a cornerback in the NFL. Because before 2023, he was playing in just about every single snap with Jacksonville and Seattle. So 97% in 2022, 96% of snaps in 2021, 93, mm-hmm. 99, 95. Like this dude was on the field all the dang time. Last year with the Texans, 57% of the time. And then with Carolina, he was there with 43% of the time. So he became kind of more of a rotational type cornerback. I will say though, despite him playing for two teams last season, when targeting quarterbacks had a pass rating of just 72.4 and he did not allow a touchdown. So maybe he is a, a situational type of corner. He can't play every single down like he did in, in his prime. But I think he's a good depth option and probably someone you have to watch at training camp. I think we see the name. We're like, oh, starting cornerback on March 20th. But as we know at training camp battles, how those play out, it'll probably be more of a good competition there. But I, I do think he's a nice piece in the room for Brian Flores. Yeah, he's he's a reliable veteran cornerback. I mean, he's played for over a half decade. That's that's what they were looking for going into free agency, right? They, I think it was more likely that they were going to make the big splash at edge to replace Daniel Hunter, which they did with Jonathan Grenard. And then they looked for like a short-term contract, someone to come in. But let's say Blackman, Evan, some of these young guys, Booth, take jumps forward. Well, you're not locked into like a three-year deal with a bunch of guarantees for a Shaq Griffin. So you can move off of him if you need to. By the way, just one other note from PFF. The Vikings, it looks like according to PFF, they played man coverage with their cornerbacks about 20%-ish of the time. A lot of zone. And Shaq Griffin in man coverage when you when they are playing man coverage would have had the highest PFF grade among all of the Vikings starting cornerbacks uh as a as a man coverage guy. So, you know, there's probably some underlying things like that that they're looking at that he still has some gas left in the tank and he can come in and and he can also I don't know what his willingness is to like help guys take his job, but can he mentor this group of young cornerbacks that doesn't have a ton of experience? I don't know. I just sort of made that narrative up. But he comes in, he's likely going to be slotted in as the guy to beat for a starting outside cornerback job. Um, Just more broadly, when you look at what the Vikings have done, the players that they've said goodbye to and the players they've said hello to, here's what the picture looks like. I'd love you guys' thoughts on the state of the Vikings defense now. So they say goodbye to Daniil Hunter, DJ Wanham, and Jordan Hicks. I think those are the only, I mean, Dean Lowry, but in terms of impact players that were actually moving the needle. Right. Daniel Hunter is a loss. DJ Wanham, really good season last year. And then Jordan Hicks, he's aging. He's in his 30s, but he had a good season last year. Mm-hmm. But they've said hello to a bunch of younger players. Jonathan Grenard is a couple years younger than Daniel Hunter. Andrew Van Ginkle in his 20s. Blake Cashman with a career year last year in Houston. Shaq Griffin comes in for some added depth at cornerback. And then these are kind of just like, they signed uh, the other Jonah Williams, not the offensive tackle Alabama Jonah Williams, but like the defensive <laughs> Jonah Williams. He's right. just kind of a depth guy. And then Jerry Tillery is the other defensive tackle they signed. Former first round pick out of Notre Dame, 27 yep. years old. His career has been underwhelming to this point. Yep. But when you look at who they've said goodbye to and who they've said hello to, do you think it's a net positive for the Vikings? Oh, boy. Uh, the loss of Hunter Hurts. No question about it. I, I actually think the the loss of Hicks is, is a good move, not based on his play, but his age. Um, I like, but I like what they've done, and I do think uh, to, to go back to the conversation that we had on the scoop with Doogie yesterday about this. I think Renard and Van Ginkle are probably going to fit into what Flores wants as far as not only trying to get after the quarterback, but also 
uh, zone blitzes and dropping guys back into coverage because Hunter had a very specific, very specific role at which he was a Pro Bowl player. Unbelievable. I don't think that he had the the abilities to do some things that Flores wanted to see. Now, I, that's no knock, and I'm sure Brian Flores loved the guy, but I'm just saying as far as fitting into a system. Here's my question, though, and it goes back to Flores, and it involves Griffin to a certain degree, you guys, but Jerry Tillery, I think, is the most in- intriguing one. Old so this Jer. is a f- Old Jer. Good old Jer is a first-round pick, and I think it's fair to say, given his uh, career track, as a guy who has not watched a lot of good, good old Jer, um, I think it's fair to say his career has been a disappointment based on his draft p- uh, positioning so far. So here's my question about guys like that. What can Flores do? Because we saw Brian Flores take a few players a year ago. Unfortunately, the defensive tackles didn't really fit this group. But Brian Flores took some players a year ago and did a great job with them. Like, mm-hmm. he mel- he got everything he could from them. So when it comes to a guy like Tillery, is there another gear there that has not been unlocked? Because what we saw f- from Flores – impressed me beyond belief. Like, he took what Ed Donatel had basically was a jalopy, right? And it wasn't. He didn't make the defense so a Ferrari. Disrespectful. So disrespectful. He didn't make it a Ferrari, but he made it. But but it was much improved. He's, yeah, he fixed it could the get, car. It could get on the freeway yeah, without yeah, embarrassing exactly. your ass. Right, yeah. Didn't so, blow up. Jerry Tillery, can he take a guy like that? Did, did he? He clearly played a role in the signing of Tillery. Does Flores look at that and say... Okay, I see something there. That's my question. And and with a guy like Shaq, uh, it is odd that he was let go by the Texans because D'Amico Ryans is a great defensive mind. But does Flores yeah. see something there? So, like, I've got a lot of questions as much about the coaching because I think it was impressive enough a year ago to where when the Vikings signed certain guys, Flores probably has to get the benefit of the doubt of having seen something at least on film. Here's a, here's a theory I have. So, couple things well number one Quasi loves doing this he it's probably I'm sure Flores is helping to identify but Quasi has shown in two years any first or second round player that has underperformed their their draft slot he'd love to take a flyer on at any position and see if you can breathe some life into their career now most of them have just been kind of they haven't panned out like Jalen Rager you know this is a really low risk signing here. I mean, if he doesn't work out, you didn't commit multiple years. You didn't commit a bunch of money, but of the 100, here's my other theory here of the 129 qualified defensive tackles that played enough snaps last year, Jerry Tillery did rank 38th in pass rush win rate. According to PFF, he had 30 pressures playing about half of the total defensive snaps which certainly doesn't put him in the elite category with the other interior guys. I mean, there's the, there's the Chris Jones, formerly uh, Aaron Donald category, where those guys are changing games and winning Super Bowls. I'm not putting old Jer in that category, but does he help with the Vikings' biggest defensive weakness? They have That's the one thing, it's the most important thing probably that they have yet to really go out and identify. Are they looking at that and saying, okay, how can we get by for one more year? We're going to we're gonna trade all of our first and second round picks for a quarterback, so we aren't going to be able to address it immediately. Can we bring in a guy like Tillery, who maybe helps us be a little less atrocious in that area? Interior, pass rush, win rate. Football. And then next year, we've got cap space. We'll right. see what we have left over for draft picks after right. we cobble everything together and move up. And next year is the move to really bring in somebody that can be an anchor in the middle. I also will say this with, with the um, with what Quasi likes to do, they're they are due for a hit. L- like when you cycle in this uh, amount of guys who, who have been potentially disappointments, underachieved m- might be the uh, more fair term. Sure, but when you do that, you know, you know, eventually your odds are going to to hit. And I'm not saying that the guy is going to turn into a Pro Bowl player, but I am saying that at some point in time, when you spin this wheel as much as Quasi has, especially if you've got the proper people in place to unlock that, 
you know, and if you get a serviceable good player, that's great. But yeah, next March, man, bring on next March right now because you are right. Like this is going to be, this is the thing is, if you do the draft right now, if you get your QB, if you set yourself up, it's not about 24. It's about it's about March of 2025. I believe yes. over the cap right now, I checked this out yesterday. I believe just right now, the Vikings are projected to have the third most space. Let's check it out. Let's go right now. So think about that. Over the cap. Come on now. Yeah, did, 2025. The way, they did also update all those cap numbers for guys like Renard, Van Ginkle, Cashman, and more Boyd years are uh, in there for guys like Renard and Van Ginkle. So we do have some Boyd years that have been trickled back in. That's okay. But they are they are indeed putting themselves in a position where they could be bigger spenders next year for the first time in a long time. Oh, yeah. Like, right now they are eighth in cap space for next year. With I'm sure some of these new contracts, especially if you're putting more void years, it means you're spreading more, right. you're spreading like a signing bonus into future years. Right. So you're going to have about 74 million in effective cap space, 90 million in total cap space, and there's still going to be a Jefferson. You're, you're not certainly going to have like a hundred million once you get done with the Jefferson contract and all that stuff. But but you're going to be top half easy. Yep. Yep. I have Bring one more on. thing here on this bonus episode before we say goodbye and make some predictions on the other purple daily. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a pet peeve narrative that I keep seeing here over the last like three days since the Vikings made that trade with the Texans. But first a shout out to our friends at federated mutual insurance company, gentlemen federated. If you're a business owner, you got to make sure you have a game plan in place to stay focused on safety and preventing claims if you don't, let the team at Federated help support your business. Federated Insurance offers a customizable lineup of industry-specific coverages and risk management services to help you continue your winning streak as a business owner. At Federated Mutual Insurance Company, it's our business to protect yours. You can find out more at federatedinsurance.com. And our friends at Zero Res are here to spearhead spring cleaning. Okay, All of us have been kind of dealing with like allergies oh. and just dust dry everything cough. i got the cough going it's gonna be really fun sitting cough. in a room with you guys today i'm mapping out now. the draft party i i am i am much I, the power You're good the power of our friends at zero res but also the power of of, of drugs can do a lot <laughs> a long, long way here. i'll be good yeah judd can sit actually come in on here. boys come well, in the room you can come <laughs> in this studio mackie and i can be in there how about that yes stay away um, but if you if you'd like to at least maybe clean your house in a more effective manner so you can get rid of some of the dust mites, that's where Zero Res comes in to deep clean your home with their 4.9 rating on Google, over 17,000 reviews. You can get three rooms zero resified with the Score North special right now. That's three rooms zero resified starting at just $129. And this month, take $75 off when you get your air ducts zero res clean. 952 Zero Res or ZeroResMinnesota.com, say you want the Scorner special. And spell it forward or backwards, it spells the same, Zero Res. So, okay. I saw this. Someone tweeted a, a screenshot from an article, and I've seen this floating around in a couple different variations. So I'll, it's a, it's a, this tweet in particular is from... Uh, it's like ape one six zero six zero one of these random anonymous accounts i continue to laugh my ass off at vikings fans thinking that your gm is cooking you guys got fleeced by the houston texans and here's the write-up from and i don't know where this is from but it's I some it's article bill, i think it's bill barnwell it's a barnwell maybe okay. i believe it was barnwell who found this this is actually Bill Barnwell's burner account. He's just throwing shade at Vikings fans for. for I think this. Declan's right. We found Barnwell. Barney, <laughs> we know you're listening right now. You're watching. So he writes, an, it's an analytical breakdown of, it's given the historical data suggesting that 98% of the time, teams trading away future picks end up losing in overall value. The Texans' acquisition of immediate value totaling 897 points versus the Vikings' 761 points. When you add up the points, the Texans fleece the Vikings. Are we are we serious? So at the end of the day, if the Vikings cobble together a couple second-round picks and a first-round pick over here, and they ship it off to the Chargers, and they get their quarterback for the next 10 years, let's say. And it's a gamble. 
It might not pan out. Are we really going to look back in five years or 10 years and say, man, it's really nice having J.J. McCarthy, or it's really nice having moved up for Drake May, but yeah, the Texans really fleece the Vikings. If you, if you break down the point system, it looks like the Texans, like, what are we doing here? Who cares? Anyway. This is the problem. This is the problem with with the point system of anything. You can get the point. So the Rich Hill uh, draft chart says the Vikings won this trade. It's unbelievable. There are analytical measures that Bill Barnwell broke out that show the Texans won this trade. See, the value of future draft picks is only 10% of the current draft picks. If you, if you add those numbers together, it looks like the Vikings can just fold up shop. It all depends on what you want. If you want your quarterback, you're going to have to go get your quarterback. Like, that's the thing about this. This is why, this is why these uh, points can drive me crazy. Because if you're going to get a quarterback too, it's like you will be told no matter where you move, you got to be very, very careful. If it's a quarterback that three teams are after, do you you're want gonna, JJ McCarthy and you're or gonna not? Have to pay him more. But, do you but, want but, Drake yeah, May or not? You can't like, go by. <laughs> you can't go by the points. Then the points go out the window when the demand, when the supply and demand comes into play. But like, you see, the, I don't know if I fully agree, Judd. If you start to do the max on the point system, well, like. This is what can, but but does that is this not the thing about sports though that gets so annoying when when you can tell there are certain probably and this is no problem mathematically inclined people that don't like understand why teams are doing so like they they don't want to understand they just want to say well the points don't make sense so you can't do yeah. this but dude it's Quasi like, is literally he's uniquely that? positioned to like he could have written this article. The dude comes from a stock trading background. He wasn't right. your traditional meathead football scout coming up through the old football systems, right? I mean, I'm sure Quasey has put a ton of thought into a point system or whatever whatever value chart the Vikings have. And they have decided what we are about to do in four or five weeks from now supersedes any sort of gap in the point system that we're looking at, right? We need a quarterback. Well, let's Period. Think about how, Full stop. But let's also th think about how things are working internally as well. Like, perhaps Quasi did say, this makes no sense. And perhaps he's got, let's say, hypothetically, a buddy named Kevin who came in and said, <laughs> I don't care if it doesn't make sense to you. Here's what we need to do to find. If we do not find a quarterback, we will be fired. So it's worth the risk of getting this wrong because if we get it right, we will be heroes. Like, I, I always go back, and I there's pushback about this constantly, but it means something, ladies and gentlemen. It means something. The draft night video of Quasi on the phone. You love this point. It's, it, is a, it is a synopsis of collaboration and how two different people can arrive at two different things. And you know what? Jordan Addison, Kevin O'Connell. If Kevin O'Connell was the only guy pounding the table saying, we got to take him. He was proven right very quickly. So you can say, and and look, the Lewis scene thing, if that had worked out, looks like it at the time. At the time, the nerds were like, this is a great trade. The Vikings are doing the right thing. And I'm like, you're moving off of 12 to go to 30. Now you've got to get those picks right. And if you start to do the math, Doug. If yeah. No, but I'm, and I'm not saying the geeks are the geeks are right sometimes and the jocks are wrong sometimes. But I think that draft night synopsis is an incredibly important uh, uh, evolution of the growth of Quasi and Kevin, because I'm guessing Kevin might not have said in year one. Yeah, let's trade back from what, 14 to 30. And then he finally the next year said, let's take this guy. This guy's my guy. Let's take him. Two things. Number one, Mackie's nerd voice is like the most nails on a chalkboard thing I I think you uh, really? you've ever done. Yes, I don't know why. It just it it's, makes me want to like. Been doing it for years. Window. I know he has been doing it. It's just I don't know why. It just it. Kills we should me do inside. a poll of the of the YouTube um, commenters. Is my is my nerd voice you, grating on your ears? An, another one for me is like Scotch tape ripping off the roll. It, really? Y like clear yeah, thick Scotch tape when that comes off it. Oh, I actually it makes my skin. Cold. I have some like scotch I'm, tape here. I maybe God, busted out for the next it. episode. Please don't, do dude. It. Those are those are real. Okay, you've got. I that that's sound just makes me. I, I 
Do the you dentist okay. drill? I'm good with, but that no. Wow. Yeah, Wait, yeah, what? Yeah. You're saying cool. a dentist drill <clears throat> doesn't give you the chills, but doesn't someone using scotch tape does? It, one, yes, yes. I'm a weird. I'm a pretty normal guy. I got a few weird things, but that is that is 100 <laughs> percent one so, of them. Interesting. Um. Oh, but I will say last last point on the Quasi thing that I wanted to make is I did find it interesting. <laughs> And I think I know why he said this, but how Adam Schefter framed it up that it was the Texans that approached the Vikings about the trade and not the other way around. Now, I don't know if that's 100% accurate, but at the same time, it is interesting that the Texans said, hey, we got this surplus of picks. You guys are open for business to a degree. Let's work out a trade that benefits both of us. And the Vikings didn't even have to give up a future first. They just gave up a future second. I don't know how you can really say they got fleeced in that trade, especially if the obviously the end goal is to go up and get your future quarterback. You know, I, I would compare it to this. My wife and I have a, we, we, we call it the, the, my wife, we call it the, the deathbed test for whenever, like if your, your friends approach you and say, hey, we're going to Vegas in a month. Usher's playing at Park MGM. Love me some Usher. Mm-hmm. Aerosmith, we've done that before. It's playing at Park MGM. Should we Even do Vegas? We're like, oh, we didn't, you know, we didn't, uh, we didn't plan on Vegas in our, annual budget you know right. we didn't it wasn't like on our list but are we going to be this is where the deathbed test comes in are we going to be 85 years old hopefully for me probably more like 60 years old but like yeah. whatever and saying boy we lived a long great <laughs> life but it could have been better if we would have saved that money and not gone to vegas right if right. you're the vikings at the end of the day and you're quasi your koc and you give up a little bit too much in terms of point value right? to get the assets needed to go get Drake May or to get J.J. McCarthy, and that quarterback is a hit yeah, no. and changes the franchise. Right. Are you going to look back and be like, oh, man, if only we had was a great run there with Drake May or J.J. J.J. to J.J. for 10 years, but we gave up. Sorry, Dex. We gave up too many points in the yeah. point system. Oh, that Texans really fleeced us. Oh, you don't like the sound of slobber, Declan. That that's your it, problem. It's yeah, the slobber. Do you not like when people chew their food loudly? No, I'm not a huge fan of that. Oh, I could see that. Yeah, that either. that's a different thing. But your yeah. voice is, <laughs> does not bug me a bit. You know the deathbed test, though. I like the deathbed sh- test. Yeah, you know I struggle. You got to be a little I, careful because otherwise it's like, whoa, we're broke. <laughs> I, I struggle with that a bit though. When when I was in my twenties, a guy I. I Worked with at the time at the Strib, who now tragically is dead himself. He said to me, "Sid Hartman." You know, no, uh, no, no. This is a guy who was killed tragically, which is really sad. Okay, different story. But he said to me at the time, he said, "Are you ever going to regret on your deathbed that that you didn't work more?" And I thought to myself, "Yeah, I might. I, I really enjoy what I do." Yeah, I can. Well, see if, that, but yeah. if you really love, enjoy, but yeah. you love what you do, and I, a lot of other people bad, hate what they do. It was a bad deathbed test. <laughs> well, no, but for you it is no. But he me- he meant it in a different way. He's asking you at the end of your time here on Earth, right? right. Did you spend time doing the things that you love to do? And your answer right. is yes, because you love yep. you love That's your what work, I'm saying. right? And so I said, yeah, no, I really like this. Like I I don't want to travel that that much. I'm not going to Europe again. I've been there once. Long flight. That question holds more meaning from a guy that died tragically too, right? Died in a car the, the accident. The irony. Terrible, terrible story. So. Man. Anyhow, all right. Just had to get that off uh, off our chest. But anyway, I, I agree with you, and but I also think what we have found is you can twist any of these, especially draft value charts, in yeah. any way that you really want to as well. We should go back and make sure that the Texans got full value on the trades yeah. that they've made to yeah. build their roster. Too. I just want to make sure. And if they take scene, if they take a guy like scene, guess what? They ain't going to say, did you see all the points we got? Right. <laughs> exactly. Like the Vikings now. Did you see all the points we got from the Lewis Lions? Lewis seen is a bust. But if you do the math, if yeah, you do the if math. We uh, yeah. So, all right. That's a little bonus episode. We'll hit you with the write that down in the accountability session and even a mock or maybe two. Purple Daily. Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl. A Super Bowl. Ah. Before we die. <laughs> <laughs>